In this video, I'm going to show how I use previously created projects as templates to increase my musical output. Now, I write instrumental cues for television use. I'm not trying to write a hit song and create an artistic masterpiece. My goal is to just set a specific mood based on a brief I've received from a library. Now, I've seen it's not uncommon for a composer to get emotionally attached to the music, but performers and artists, that's a good thing. When it comes to underscoring TV shows, less is more. Keep it simple. Don't beat yourself up because you're just writing some cues, quote unquote. Just think about it. Are you trying to create art or are you trying to get paid? Now, of course, musicians want to create art, but they've also got to eat. So if you want to make music writing for TV, you obviously need quality, but you also have to be able to produce quantity. Or you're going to need a lot of patience because it's going to take a long time to get paid. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This project in Logic uh, is titled Ambient Hip Hop 21. Uh, so I'm working on a batch of ambient hip hop cues. And uh, I have some, about half a dozen that I created for a library. Uh, got some feedback on the cues and tweaked them, and uh, they've been accepted. So I now know I've got a small body of work, a half dozen cues that have been accepted. The mix is right, the style is right, the patches are right. So now what I can do is take one of those projects uh, and then change everything up. Uh, musically speaking, and then have a new cue. So I'm going to show you how quickly that can happen. Uh, I won't do any editing. I'll do this all real time. And so let's get started. Uh, this cue here, uh, I started with Project uh, Ambient Hip Hop uh, 04. I opened it in Logic, did a save as, and changed it to Ambient Hip Hop 21. Uh, that's the number I'm on right now. So let's listen to the original. it two minutes of ambient hip-hop so what am I gonna do to create a new cue I've already done the save as I've got my new project so the first thing I do is just select all my tracks I'm gonna change the color of these things I'm gonna make them something dark so now why do I do that because as I change various elements I'm gonna change the colors of those sections to something like green or gold just so I can see yes I've edited that track no this is still an original that I need to change so in this genre it's hip-hop it's largely based on drums uh, I'm gonna select all my tracks here I'm gonna mute them all I'm gonna, actually I'll turn them all off and then I'm gonna start working on just some of the bass elements for me it's about kick and snare Simple pattern here, it's ambient, it's not supposed to be super busy. So I've got two kicks happening right now. 
since I'm creating a new track, I want to have something sonically slightly different. So let's jack around. Uh, I'm using Lethal. It's a nice little package. It's got some nice package to it. Low on the CPU. So let's find a different kick here. Delete that. Um, that's different. So let's, let's get something going here. Is that make all my velocities the same now I've got a kick drum let's take a look at the snare I can keep that same pattern let's just uh, find a kick we a snare we like it's more mellow You know, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna I don't like the regular two and four, so I'm going to pull out the two. And I'm gonna keep this one more mellow, so I'm gonna take that last hit. So now okay, boom. So that's done. And what you can see throughout this project here is you know areas where I've got nothing, areas where I've got content so i've just created my kick and my snare let me change the color of that snare to green so i know that's good now this is where you start getting some, getting some speed some composers will spend a lot of time making the hi-hat slightly different in phase one versus phase two uh, i've seen some composers that keep the same hi-hat pattern and kick the whole way through um, i see that more often in reference files that i get from libraries here's what we want this stuff to sound like you know, I'm kind of, you know, I like to be creative and, and really add lots of tweaks. But again, you've got to have a volume output as well as quality. So I'm not going to be so, you know, OCD about making things slightly different every four bars or eight bars. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second here. So I'm taking all these these things. I'm doing an option drag. And in, in uh, Logic, it overwrites. I've got it set so it overwrites whatever's there. It's not layering. It's replacing. So now... I've got my kick and snare done. And if I uh, highlight all my tracks, turn them back on, you can see this is why I use colors. Because I can now see these two tracks right here, kick and snare, are done. So uh, like, let's go solo, solo. I mean, there's different ways you can do this stuff here. Um, but let's just turn them all off. And then come back and do kick, snare. Um, do my hats, I guess, next. So I am a big fan of uh, Black Diamonds. It's a great library. Um, it's got some pre-sequenced hi-hats. Click on the right track here. So now I can mix those four elements up. So let's, uh, let's just do some new hats here. This is a fairly mellow one, so I won't do too much. get my velocity is the same so now I've got hats and again I can just copy and overwrite where I've got you know part of creating a cue keeping it simple but adding variety is adding and removing elements throughout so I don't have my hi-hats going all the way through I've got them coming in and going out same thing for uh, snare I got the snare dropping out for a bit and uh, I hear from libraries that they want to have a, a breakdown section somewhere in the middle that's that's getting more and more common from the folks I work with so a little breakdown section uh, to change them the mood not too deeply just same groove just quieter section so now I've got kick snare and hats done. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to pull the crashes out. I uh, don't want those this time. And then the sweeps, I'm going to probably keep those there, but I'm going to lower the volume. Um, white noise is not necessarily a great thing for uh, TV cues, so it gets in the way of vocals and might sound kind of just bad in general. So I'm going to drop the volume a bit for these guys. 
that right there. Here's the dining walls here. Okay, so let's see what we got here now. Okay, so initial groove is done. Now everyone works their own way. I'm gonna go and do some. Uh, we need some. We need some chords. The the harmony is the basis of this whole thing for me. So uh, there's different ways to do this. Lots of great tools. Uh, I love music theory. I've been trained in music theory, but there's lots of great tools for people that don't know the first thing about theory. They can have you cranking out content uh, very very quickly. And again, with zero knowledge of what it actually means. So uh, in this particular track, I've got uh, X for product called Cthulhu. Let me change this to a bigger view so you can see it. Uh, this is a great little tool. What is it? Uh, it's, it's got two things. It's got a, a chord generator and it's got an arpeggiator. I've got that turned off right now, but I'm, uh, that's the arpeggiator. Boom. So chords. What does this mean? I've got, when I press a single key, it's going to play... An entire chord and it comes with a bunch of presets it comes with these Bach chorales and some diatonics and various classical I've picked up echo soundworks package I love their products so uh, I've got a great collection here so um, what I had before was this you know, E minor thing mellow style um, this is from the original cue don't forget so I'm just gonna play middle C and you can see it's it's a C major chord this is about as clean as it gets. One, three, five, and, and a five on top. I'm going up one key. You can see what you can pushing now. It's a D major, E minor. Now, even though I'm pressing the F key, it's giving me a G chord. D sus, A minor, C major seven. So these chord progressions were created by, uh, in this case, Echo Sounds Works. Um, and if I go to one of the Bach chorales, these are all you know public domain things. I can just go up the keys and you'll hear. That's a nice progression right there. G sus, G major, E minor. There we go, we're gonna use that. So how do I get that into my track? I go to my track where it's played. Let me get rid of this here. And I can record it, or I can step in through it. I'm going I'm to record it. C. D. E. F. I'm done. Let's quantize that. Velocity is the same. So now I've got my core progression. Again, this is based on the uh, Cthulhu plugin. I went C, D, E, F. Right here, this red, these red dots is what I'm pushing. And up here is how they define the chord. Not always accurate, but close enough. And the green keys are actually what uh, is being sent via MIDI to my DAW. Got it? So, now I've got my chord changes. What am I going to do? The same thing I do each time. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go and write these chords, and I like labeling things. So let me bring it back up here. What did I have? I had G sus, G major, E minor, A minor. Let's rename that. Shift N to rename. G sus, G major, A minor, E minor, I think. Is that what it was? Let's just take a look again. Again, I'm doing this real time. This is how I work. G sus, G major, E minor, A minor. Good. G sus. Now I can uh, highlight. Well, I'll just drag this one across. Boom. Two, three. That one there. Drag one of these here. You see the concept here? Um, and I've got a second pad that I'm using. So I got this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Drag down. Turn it on. Let's start from here. Actually, one thing I'm noticing here on this pad, I don't have my uh, Cthulhu plugin turned on, so it's not giving me what I need. So, uh, what I do here is drag this over here. 
I'm just going to do a control, I'm sorry, option drag and move it, put it onto that track. That way I'm taking exactly the settings I've got here and putting it on this track here. Close this out. Let's try that again. That's better. Now these patches are the exact same patches I used from the original project. Um, it's really your call if you want to keep the same patches since you're changing the music. If you want to take it a step further, you can change the patch, uh, change the actual chord patch. But since this is this genre is asking for kind of airy synths, they want reverse kind of sounds in there. Um, I'm going to keep it. I may tweak it a little bit. Let me go and mess with the EQ to give me a different sound. So this is on the sphere. Bring up the EQ here. Let's kind of mess with that for a second. And I like that sound. I'm going to take some of this mid range out again. Maybe I'm going to affect this some more, make it a little different. So let's bring up something like Glitch. I love Glitch. Uh, glitch is a great plugin. Uh, it does lots of cool things. I'm going to clear these out and just add some subtle changes here. Let me uh, do an init. So now I've got four beats, four divisions. Um, if I want to do a, a tape stop. There it is at the bottom. We sold that track, so you have that one. This is just one part, one layer. No, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. I'm going to change. Let's get rid of Glitch. Let's look at the atmosphere patch itself. Let's see if I can get a change out of a bit. And this is the part that where you actually spend more time. Slowing, slowing your progress down, but you want it to sound good. So I've got the uh, backtracking the backup patch. Yeah, I think this is too busy for me. Let's find something new here. It's not going to work for me. No, I'm not liking that at all either. Do to do to do. Let's put some pads. This is a nice. I know this patch. This is a nice rich patch. String patch. I'm going to keep that. I'm just going to bring the volume down. And you may hear some glitching going on. It's because I'm actually recording audio and video while working on this project. Uh, my hardware is not big at all. It's a, a MacBook Air 8 gig of RAM uh, i5 processor. So it's a 2013 model. So it's not a ton of horsepower. You don't need it, but when you're doing multi things like recording video and audio while doing a project, it gets a little cranky. So let's see what I got here. I, I changed to that uh, uh, string patch. Works, but it's kind of hot, so fix the Q, takes my eyes out. It's a little more watery, a little more ambient. Cool, 
probably still hot in the volume wise but okay so now I've got that done let's uh, put it back where it, where it needs to go good okay so now I've got my strings my pulsing beats um, I've got my notation here so I know what my music is so let's go add the bass to it this bass pad at least yeah I'll do that I'll do that here so now let's again do this one section here I already know what it is so we got G G A E. Do you want to go low or high? A little space between those. Now I may take that out because it might just conflict too much with the 808 I'm going to add, which we're going to do next. I'll turn this guy on. What else have we got here? I've got... Uh, this is another great library I, I love. I use all the time. Urban Warfare. 808 Warfare. Great library, lots of great stuff in here. So I'm gonna stick with that modern 808. Again, I know that this track has been signed. Everything sounds good. So let me add some GGAE type bass here. I forgot, I got my kick happening here. So let's bring the kick down because you want your kick and bass usually locked in. So let's do that. And then we got G, G, A, and then E. You know, I want a longer bass in here, so I'm gonna go add a longer bass. Urban Warfare is this little glitch where it defaults to Omni mode for a MIDI. So I gotta go change that. Where is it? I gotta scroll down, Omni mode, change that to default. And now it won't be playing. Much better. So now I got my kick. Let's drag that where I need it. Again, I'm holding down option. Kick. Um, can you give me a last note there? That's that. Probably the same thing for this phrase as well. Okay. Uh, we're almost done, folks. I'm going to keep the sweeps that I've got. I've turned them down. I can. I guess I can change those back to uh, a green. That we knew. It. So what do I got left here? My bass texture, I changed it, but I don't know if I want it or not. And then a, a nice Rhodes patch. So let's audition this. So that's there. pad and the 808 play at the same time. Thing, uh, I'm mixing in headphones because of the recording. I usually mix through my 
my Yamaha monitors. Uh, so they may be misrepresenting the mix to me. I'll check this uh, when I'm done recording before I submit it to make sure that the mix is accurate. So I'm going off the headphone mix uh, because friends don't let friends mix in headphones. At least that's what I've been told. So uh, the bass pad looks good there. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it back where it was. I know I made some changes. And if I think it's too muddy later on, I may just pull it out. At a minimum, I will sidechain the bass texture to the 808 kick so that the 808 kick takes over when needed. Okay, so now all I got left is if I want to add roads or not. And this is the more variable track here. Um, I had chords. I had chords and then I kind of simplified things. Got even simpler and I went back to chords again. These two here are the same as these two. Well, these two. Let's do this over here. So these two are the same as these two. Um, let's give it a listen for a second. grins let's just add the same thing drag my uh, track up here I don't think yeah I don't have Cthulhu on the roads track so let me bring that over here option drag so now the same thing is there what's it sound like definitely dominates So I'm going to change the rhythms up a little, the rhythms up just a little bit here. Let's do this here. Add some syncopation. Okay, so now by itself. together. Very, very basic and keep it sparse. This is the breakdown section, so let's do this. Auto punch section here, so I don't. Uh, we're in G. Oh, wait, that's right. So, since I've got Cthulhu on this track, I can't do single notes. So, a couple ways I can go about this. I haven't. Uh, done any exporting of the MIDI. There's a way to export the MIDI, I believe. Uh, but I'm going to... Let's do something simple. Let's duplicate this track. And now I'm going to... Now this second track, I'm going to take the plugin off. Go away, plugin. Boom. So now it's there. Now I can do... This will let me kind of mix my melody independently of the Rhodes track. So, <clears throat> let's do a little recording here real quick. So wait, wrong track, my bad, my bad. Live recording, that's what happens, one more time.
Uh, it was all right, but for this purpose, he shows you what I got. He's all more gentle. Since it's ambient, let's change all my velocities to something soft. And to do that, I am holding down the shift key and the option key. This lets me change everything that's highlighted the same value. That works all over logic. One more time. Set this to a delay. G. I don't want that sus on a G, so let's do a fifth. for me so now I've got a full track you want to hear the whole thing I guess we can do that let's go from the beginning now actually no let's first uh, play the old one I'm gonna save my work here yeah Let's go back to the new version. Definitely a different track. didn't do I usually do this in the beginning my bad but I want to change the key I want to keep things sonically fresh so um, you know I'm not gonna change the key this time just because I'm just about done with this project but normally I would go in and change the key do this instead of G do it in a flat or F or whatever um, you can do a few things you can just go in your tracks and select all and, uh, and not with the Cthulhu tracks but you know just select all and then drag it up and change your key saying so you got to think of all your sonic elements you got to think the bases the keys the pads and then don't forget that 808 those are the the pads or the the patches in this track that are harmonic and so if you drag them you will change the key and meanwhile your kick snare other things will stay the same and that's it uh, i'm not sure how long this video has been but it's kind of slower because i'm narrating what i'm doing while doing it uh but that's basically the concept take something you know has been approved and accepted and signed and then go back in do a save as change stuff up keep the same format and you can do a lot of different things you can spend more time finessing 
individual components or changing things. But when you want to crank out a lot of these, uh, go in and change stuff, and you got new tracks faster than you than you might be you might be expecting. Uh, and again, the goal is not to create. I'm not trying to create art. I'm trying to create quantity and quality. Uh, because libraries need lots of music because shows use lots of music. If you watch reality TV or whatever shows you're writing for, take some notes and just see how many cues are being used in a show. Popular reality shows easily use well over 100 cues uh, for an hour-long show. So uh, you need a lot of music out there. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, look forward to any feedback you all want to send. Thanks for watching.